In the age of big data and deep learning, data visualization is an extremely important tool for many applications. In this episode, we're going to combine the Plotly.js library along with Angular and Firebase to create three different types of charts that are capable of handling real-time data. We'll start by building a basic 2D line chart, and then we'll build up to a 3D topographical chart. Then we'll finish up with a ternary chart that's capable of staying in sync with the real-time backend on Firebase. The first step is to install the Plotly.js library, which we can do with npm install plotly.js flag save. Then add it to the script section in the angular-cli.json file. It's worth noting that Plotly is a pretty big library, so if you want to slim it down a little bit, go to your node modules and find just the script that you need for your app. In this case, we're using the entire library, which is probably overkill for most situations. Then in your typings.d file, add the Plotly class so it's recognized by TypeScript. Now we can start building our first line chart. This chart will just be completely static, just to show you the general concepts behind Plotly. In the HTML, create an empty div, and then give it a template reference variable named chart. Then in the component TypeScript, we'll use viewchild as well as element ref. Then we're going to build this chart service in the next step once we start using live data from Firebase, so you can ignore that for now. And we'll also use the lodash library. So to get a hold of the div in the HTML, we use viewchild and then reference that chart variable that we name there. Then we'll name it L in the TypeScript, which is more or less an Angular convention. Then to actually build a Plotly chart, there are three basic variables that you need to be aware of. First, we have element, which is the HTML element that will be replaced by the chart. And then we have data, that's the actual data that's going to be displayed in the chart. Here we have a few numbers on the x and y axes that will create a basic line chart with a curve. The third variable is style, which defines the style options that vary from chart to chart. Then to put everything together, we just call plotly.plot and pass it the element, data, and style. Back in the app, we can see we get this simple line chart, but it's packed with a bunch of features from Plotly, such as the ability to zoom in and zoom out, you can save it as an image, and do all kinds of different stuff to it. So that was pretty simple. Now let's build a 3D chart that uses data from Firebase. So I'm building a basic service here that injects the Angular Fire database. Then it returns the data set we want as a Firebase list observable. In this example, my database is a collection of arrays with each array having its own set of data points. These data points correspond to the elevation of a mountain and I'll provide a link to the data set in the description. Now, getting back to the component, we create a new function for this chart, but this time we pass it the data as an argument. Like before, we set the element variable, then we format the data specifically for 3D charts, so we pass the data as the z-axis, and set the type to surface. Then for the layout or style, we set a few simple parameters here just to make the chart look good. And again, we call plotly.plot and pass it these variables. Now we need to pass the chart some data. So we do this during ng on init by subscribing to the data set in the database. In this example, we don't expect our data to change. So we're just going to take one and then subscribe to it so we don't have a long running subscription. And then we'll pass the data from the subscription to the topo chart function. Back in the app, you can see we get this really cool 3D interactive chart based on our data in Firebase. And there's a ton of ways you can customize this, so make sure to check out the Plotly docs and the community for more inspiration on what you can do. So the last type of chart that we'll build is a chart that can actually update its appearance based on real-time data. For this example, I have some user rankings that will rank a user based on their abilities as an analyst, designer, or developer. Then we're going to visualize this data on a ternary chart, which is basically just a triangle that compares three different types of data. First, we're going to add a function to our service that will allow us to make this update in Firebase. It just references a single data point and updates it with some new data. Then in the component, we're going to subscribe to the data in ng on init. But before we pass the data to the function, we're going to purge the chart existing in that element. Then we'll go ahead and call the function that builds the chart. But before we get there, let's create a function that will just randomize the data for a certain data point. Then you can attach this function to a click event so the user can randomize the data just with the click of a button. Now let's build this ternary chart. We start by passing it the element as usual. Then we map each of the three categories down to an array of its values. 
in most cases, you'll need to map your data down to an array for it to work with any kind of data chart. The rest of the code is mostly just presentational, so we just add a few options to give it some nice looking styles. Plotly has a big library of examples, so you can usually find a good starting chart for most situations. Now, back in the app, if we click the button that says real-time update, we can see the red circle moving around the screen. That's because it's actually being updated in the back end in Firebase. That's it for real-time charts with Plotly and Firebase. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want help building your own features, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. You'll receive a free copy of my book, as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.